Fine. Uh, so, um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Nicholas from Aptis. I'm Director of Innovation. And today I'm going to introduce what we do in VR for industrial cases. So first, um, let's say a couple of slides on the company itself, because we, yeah, you may not know Optis well. So uh, uh, Optis, we've been founded in uh, 1989, so nearly 30 years um, uh, from now. We are 250 now uh, highly skilled experts in different domains in uh, computer science, computer graphics, um, acoustics, optics. Uh, we have 14 famous partners. It can be technological partners like uh, NVIDIA or algorithmic. Uh, it can also be some uh, industrial partners like Bentley, uh, Boeing, Airbus. Uh, we have 2,400 customers uh, under different markets, uh, automotive, aerospace, um, consumer goods, architecture, um, general lighting, of course. We have four R&D centers, uh, mainly in the south of France, um, and uh, 8,100 licenses all over the world that are spread on the top 500 largest companies. So we have subsidiaries um, all around the world, in, uh, in the US, in Japan, China, uh, Europe. So what we do mainly is, uh, well, we are doing physics-based uh, simulations for nearly 30 years now. So um, we do spectral computations, physics-based rendering, ray trace rendering. Um, we also do some acoustics. And as we are um, um, a software company, we do computer science, uh, obviously. So our goal is uh, really to replace the physical prototypes by virtual prototypes um, for a lot of reasons, um, which are some of them are listed here. The first one is that we believe that virtual, virtual prototyping um, enhances creativity. It's much easier to create with virtual prototypes than with the real ones. Um, you can easily experience, make iterations on the virtual prototype to, um, to improve the quality. You save time and money. We can do some collaborative studies um, to communicate easily around the mock-up. And it reduces the ecological footprint, obviously. So this is the main um, reasons why we believe that uh, virtual prototyping is, uh, is, is, is very good. So now let's go a bit deeper on the technical side, on the products that we develop. So it's mainly um, the seven big brands of products that we have at Optis. I will present the three or four of them, uh, not all of them. Uh, the first one is what we call Spears. Um, it's the product we developed for 30 years now. Um, it's mainly our physics-based ray tracer, Monte Carlo ray tracer, um, that aims at simulating light and vision very accurately. Then we have the OMS, Optical Material Scanner, uh, 2 and 4. So 2 is the mobile version and 4 is the bench. Um, the goal of this, um, this scanner is to make the acquisition of all the optical properties of materials, including volume scattering, reflection, transmission. So we take all the optical properties of the, the materials um, and the sources as well. So we get the spectrum, we get the intensity diagram of the sources that can then be used within our tools. CRT the real-time uh, ion visualization tool, which is some kind of SPIOS in real-time, so physics-based, spectral-based, but uh, in real-time. Uh, HIM, uh, Human uh, Integrated Manufacturing, is the goal is to simulate human-centric processes like assembly, disassembly operations, training. So it's much more using virtual reality um, to train people with physics engines, collision, and, and aptics. VRX, um, the, the simulator, so driving simulator, flying simulator. Um, Aesthetica, which is um, the positive quality evaluation. So we make mechanical variation, deformation on the pieces to simulate the impact of variations on the positive quality. And LIA, which is our acoustic uh, brand of simulation. So today I will mainly present um, SPIOS, CRT, HIM, and VRX, which are the three real-time um, applications. So SPIOS first, um, so as I said, it's, uh, well, all the images you will see in these presentations are based on simulations. It's not pictures, it's uh, from our tool. So the goal of SPIOS is, as I said, um, an offline CPU, GPU based uh, ray tracer based on Monte Carlo. Uh, so what we do is that we combine all the optical properties of the materials. So it's BRDF, um, SV, BRDF, BTF, BTDF. Um, we put that on the geometry, uh, we do the same for sources, so we define the spectrum, we define the, the way the sources uh, propagate in the, in the environment. 
And based on that, we can ensure a 100 true life representation of the, the virtual mockup. So what you see here is, is again a simulation. And you can really compare it to a photo. You will have exactly the same result because uh, it's, uh, it's photometry based. So you can really make measures uh, on, the, on the virtual simulation. Uh, we are also CAD integrated, so our tools can directly come or be used inside Katia, um, SolidWorks, NX, Creo. Um, we are looking at integrating Elias also and some other CGI tools like Maya 3ds Max. Uh, but it, today it's mainly engineering oriented, so it's, it's on the CAD uh, side. Um, again, we, uh, our main differentiator with other uh, physics based renderers is that we, uh, uh, we are a decision-making platform. Um, so our customers take million-dollar decisions on, on the result of the simulation. So uh, we cannot make any error in the simulation. So this is an example of uh, a simulation result uh, on the left and um, the final uh, product one or two years after it, it, it has been produced, it has been simulated. So we really uh, focus on the realism of the simulation. So finally, if I want to, to summarize PIOS, um, it's you, you start from just the geometry, a basic mock-up. You add all the optical properties of materials. You define your lighting um, the way you want your lighting to be in the final product. Then you run the simulation, and you have uh, a very, uh, let's say, physics-based result uh, on which you can trust to take decision. So that was uh, PIOS. I have a, a video of... Um, a tail lamp that has been designed recently with PIOS. So this is uh, a simulation. And um, we are playing with different parameters, optical parameters, to have the, the results the customer wants to achieve. So here it's, it's a complex tail lamp with different mirrors, an half mirror, a full mirror that are curved. And we will play with the curvature of the mirrors, with the, um, the different transmission properties to achieve different optical effects. So we can play with the reflection coefficient of the mirrors and see the effects uh, on, the, on the final uh, result. So we play with the reflection coefficient. And you will see that it completely changes just by changing this small parameter. It completely changes the, the, the final representation of the product. As it's a tool used uh, in the industry, we can also tell if it will pass the regulation or not, depending of, on if it's a US regulation, a European regulation. So it's really, really accurate. Um, and you can do everything virtually. Then we will change the, the shape of the mirror itself, the curvature. And it will, again, change completely the, um, the way that the 3D effect will, uh, will be displayed finally. Sorry. And finally, at the end, ah, oh, shit. Finally, at the end, we can generate animation under a different point of view to see the, the optical effect that depends on the, on the viewpoint. Um, so that was the design phase, and at the end, we'll generate the high-end visualization of the product. So you can see the final result. And you can, you, you, I don't have the real one, but if you had the real one in front of it, it will look exactly the same, with the same uh, photometry result, with the same optical effects. So it's, it's really a, a, a decision-making tool. So that was PIOS, offline simulations. Then we have uh, CRT, which, is, um, which can be seen as a real-time version of PIOS. So it uses the same data, the same BRDF, the same spectral data, uh, but we combine different renderers uh, to, to, to have a, a, a very accurate real-time representation of the, the product. So we basically mix OpenGL um, renderer, real-time ray tracing with CUDA, and progressive ray tracing with uh, CUDA as well, and OpenCL. Um, so the goal is to view the product under any angle with different configurations in real-time. Um, it can be deployed uh, once the, the data prep is ready. It can be deployed on a VR center, on HMDs, on a web page if you want to do some web configurators. Um, well, any kind of environment. 
we support native CAD import with uh, a lot of, of tools that will help preparing the data, simplifying the geometry. Uh, and we are compatible with 4K and uh, HDR screens. So I have a few, few videos of, um, of what we can do in terms of real time. So on the top left uh, corner, we have what we call the progressive rendering. It's, uh, it's a Monte Carlo based GPU renderer that runs on, uh, on one GPU here, one GP100 from, from NVIDIA. So currently it's our own ray tracer, but it will be uh, replaced in the next version by optics uh, to improve the, uh, to the, 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 um, the speed of the simulation and to be compatible with the latest uh, GPU. But you can see that in a, few, in a few seconds you have something very accurate in terms of, uh, of rendering quality. Once we, we stop moving. And all the materials you can see here have, has been, have been scanned with our own material scanner. Um, and so yeah, in a few seconds we have a, a very uh, trustful simulation. Then we have um, another renderer, which is fully real-time. OpenGL DirectX uses the same data, but in real-time to, um, to achieve um, um, headset deployment, um, VR deployment, or even um, web configurators that I will show just after. So here again, it's not progressive, it's not Monte Carlo, it's OpenGL, so you don't have this noise uh, and this image refining. But it's again the same data, it's uh, propagation with uh, 80 wavelengths, uh, so it's definitely spectral based and um, it can be used for IN product um, review. This can be deployed on a web page, as you can see here. So you can do some local computing with, with WebGL, but you can also um, um, uh, deport the, the, the rendering on a GPU cluster and then just stream the, um, the, um, the 3D data flow on the web page um, so that on the, on the final device, device you don't have any computation done. And the last one is, um, is um, the, the, um, the connection with the substance from algorithmic to manage complex representation of materials, even uh, you can see some anisotropic rendering here that we can manage by importing uh, Substance or MDL files from NVIDIA. Um, the next video is, um, is still CRT, but we can use PIOS to pre-compute part of the lighting and uh, display in real time on a workstation, on an LGMD, um, a very high-end result and still play with the light sources after the simulation is done. So um, here it's, um, it's a complete car interior and you can play with the different sources, color, the power. I will then switch to daytime to see the same, the same um, object, the same car, but under different lighting conditions. So now I change the environment, I switch to, um, to daytime and you can see how accurate the rendering can be um, as it's, again, physics-based. You can see all the miss uniformity on the light guide um, because when you propagate the light on the guide, it's not uniform, but you want to, you want to see it before you produce the car. Um, so definitely, um, uh, virtual prototyping helps a lot in this, uh, in this kind of situation. So that was the, the CRT, the real-time renderer. Then we have uh, him to simulate human-centric uh, processes. So again, the goal is to simulate assembly, disassembly operations, uh, training. So we can directly go from the CAD to a VR application with um, a physics engine, so collision engines. We can use physics, we can use some others uh, with haptic feedback. And in a few, let's say, seconds, you go from the CAD to a full uh, a VR center. Even um, managing point clouds, we can import up to um, 500 million points in real time, directly from a laser scan. Um, and something we did um, in cooperation with Bentley. Yeah. 
so it's the Stripe project um, that we did with the Bentley. The goal was to um, to help uh, people to be trained in assembly operations. Much earlier in the product development process. But virtually, so the assembly operations are all done manually at Bentley. It's quite a complex operation because um, so the there's a lot of um, a, new a lot of pieces to assemble, and they've reproduced the entire workflow virtually in a, in a cave in a VR center uh, with collision engines to. Um, to really study how the ergonomics can help, how we can help in a very early stage uh, at ergonomics design. So we got some optic feedback, some collision engine um, uh, to provide uh, user feedback on, on the process. And then the last one is um, is what we call VRX. So it's our brand of, uh, of simulator. We have driving simulators, we have headlamp simulator. So um, the goal is now to have a fully dynamic environment, um, with still physics-based, of course, but with um, artificial intelligence for pedestrians, for traffic. So if you drive your car, you want to drive your car with a very complex environment. So we have our own, um, our own algorithm to have pedestrians, uh, other cars, and the very accurate car dynamics uh, to drive. We can even um, address ADAS or AD, um, autonomous driving, um, uh, market because we simulate sensors, the camera sensor, ultrasonic sensor, uh, LiDAR, radar. So all these can be done virtually um, even before you produce the car. So I will show you um, one last video of what we did with Ferrari for um, driving at Endlam Simulator. You can put the sound a bit higher. It's a Ferrari engine. so. dynamics of the car. So now they basically uh, design all the LMs and TLMs with, with our tools directly and test it with the, um, the motion uh, simulator. So that's it for me. Uh, thank you. If you want to, um, to experiment some of the demos, we are at the booth 12.23. Um, uh, so thanks a lot.